Das ist eine Schiene, hier ist ich. Aber es haben wir früher am Kern Tour, wie man es gar nicht. Aber es haben wir Koffer, äh, erst am kommenden Gabig, an der Lässe für die Fahnen. Aber es haben wir früher Koffer, Urs und Töfscher. Ich kenne den Namen. Hallo, ein Schiene gewesen bin und ein Best in North Sky. Und uh, my, my daily work ist mit Kommende Gallic. I work uh, in development of the Gallic language. And I'm also uh, a director of Staffen Community Trust and of the National Centre for Gallic Language and Culture, Salmorovsky. Uh, Staffen Community Trust was set up in, in 1994, I believe. And Uris and Töv we call it in Gallic, because of course you can't just literally translate. And the people in Staffen, they call it, Staffen is a Norse name, which means the place of pillars. And we see that in the island of Staffa, these basalt pillars, um, and Dun Staffen as well, because the Norse seemed to be, they named after what they saw. Uh, but languages work differently. Um, to the Gales, Staffen is Antövsher, which is the east side, that's what they call it. So Uris and Fövsher has been going until 1994, and it was established to, um, to be able to do things out with the, the filling of potholes and the sorting of sign. They, they wanted to be more ambitious than that. But the biggest project was our Eco Museum, which was established, um, it was opened to the public in 2007. And the Eco Museum was called Kimenen, which means food steps. It has two names, Sky Eco Museum and Kimenen, which means food steps. So we opened up 13 sites with gateways so that people would have a, a feeling that when they were coming into uh, our area, North Sky, which has the uh, Trotterdish Ridge running through it, um, you know, top tier heritage designations, National Scenic Area, SSSIs, it's also an active crofting community. People work in their crofts and a traditional Gaelic speaking community. Um, and so it's got an awful lot going for it, culturally and naturally with its heritage. So the Eco Museum was about in sharing a bit of, of, of what we have with our pilgrims who are coming in their droves. And with the onset of social uh, media, uh, our sites have actually gone quite crazy with people visiting. And I find, as someone who gives lifts to hitchhikers, I find that they're very well informed, these people. They know what they're coming to do. Uh, they know about the stories, etc. They can see it's a fantastic place. Now, the ski or not, the, the sky person doesn't always see that. Perhaps particularly the young. Because they might harbour ideas that the cities are better. So, we very much want children to place value on what they have on their doorstep, on their own stashi, on their doorstep. Because what we find is they go away and then they go into study, but then if they're in relationships with the, if they want to have children settle down, they want to come home because they know they had a good upbringing here and it's a safe place for children and etc. So it's very, very important how we deal with the young people if they're tomorrow's, you know, they're us tomorrow.
my name is Angus and I'm the Programme Manager for the Eco Museum in Staffan on the Isle of Skye and today we're at Buenebraren which is Brothers Point. Brothers Point on the northeast coast of Skye. It's, it's one of the most intriguing uh, localities on, the, on that coast with archaeology and just history up, up, to the, well, up to the present day. But I, when I was growing up in the local area, I was, uh, I was, under, I was, uh, I was led to believe that it was named after brothers who were drowned there during the 19th century and uh, th that persisted for years uh, until uh, until I did some research in into it the when I when I looked at you know maps from the 1700s I could see that it had the uh, had the name then Brothers Point or in Gaelic Ruin Amraren so that uh, r really um, was obviously before you know the brothers were drowned. You know, when I did research into that drowning, I, I in fact discovered that there were cousins who were drowned there. They were they were fishermen who had sailed from uh, Lochinver and with a load of herring, and they had initially they had gone to Stornoway uh, to sell the herring, and and not receiving a a good price, they decided to to set sail for Malig, but uh, as they did so, the north wind, or a probable northeasterly gale, blew up and their boat ended up being wrecked on, on the shore uh, close to Brothers Point, or in that bay, which is it's known as uh, Port Eilish. Port Eilish, it's, uh, it was a fishing port at one time. When I say fishing, it's, it referred to the lobster uh, fish, fishing boats that used to ply from that locality. Uh, you can still see evidence of where the, you know, where the boats were stored. They, these would be open, open type boats which would be, you know, dragged on rollers uh, by several people. So the, so that brothers' point theory, uh, you know, regard, regarding the brothers, we can dismiss. Uh, you know the, the fact we can dismiss the you know the notion that they were that the locality was named after uh, these brothers. So the next uh, uh, line we had you know regarding the origin of the name was uh, we looked into the arch archaeological evidence in that area, and there is evidence that there were uh, you know monastic dwellings there. Uh, of course, these early monks from about 1,500 years ago, uh, that, that would possibly refer to the brothers. But uh, again, I think that that can be dismissed uh, on the basis that the, uh, the, there's another line of research which suggests that, uh, or indeed shows factually, that there were two brothers uh, living in the fort, uh, at the highest point of Brothers Point, there's a f there's an Iron Age fort there. It's called Dudenhausen. It uh, it would appear that uh, these two brothers, who are described, they are described in history and from 1610. And uh, I know that's uh, unusual, you know, to pinpoint uh, brothers living and there to that particular year, but they went down in history for all the wrong reasons. They, they and others sailed from there across to Westeros, a place called Diabek, Westeros, and they murdered the farmer and his servants in that locality and stole his cattle. And uh, the, the farmer's daughter uh, was being ed educated in Edinburgh at the time, which is quite unusual, you know, for that period. Uh, she was probably being educated in Edinburgh University, and she she came home after that event, discovered what had happened, and apparently there were witnesses to to the crime, who uh, were able to identify uh, one or more 
of of the individuals, she was able then to uh, go, go back to Edinburgh and and bring out a warrant to uh, which uh, which which was really known as a fire and sword warrant. And th that term is derived from the fact that <coughs> that the warrant uh, uses these words uh, in these approximate terms that. Uh, she would. She was allowed to have these individuals hunted down by whatever means available to her, including fire and sword. But uh, it's rather frustrating me that there's, there's no evidence that that these individuals were actually brought to justice. And on the contrary, there is a little bit of evidence uh, thereafter, which indicates that they may have been pardoned. That. Admittedly, that sounds rather unusual, you know, that anybody would could be pardoned, you know, for such a heinous crime. It would appear that one of the individuals concerned was a son of the Laird of Rosie, and another individual was a son of the Laird of Lewis. Uh, the two brothers uh, uh, were not known to be connected, you know, to any uh, any powerful family, but they, they, they were referred to as being uh, from Coolachnock and they're, one of them is known in Gaelic as Do Thu Ich Gruri, which uh, translates to uh, Black Donald, son of Roderick. Uh, to this day that uh, locality is sometimes still referred to as, uh, again in Gaelic, Presa God Yu Ichruri, Black Donald's cupboard. It's it's unlikely that that these individuals were were used in the fort, you know, as a permanent base, but they may have been using it, you know, as a as a temp temporary place of refuge. Uh, intriguingly, although there is very little to be seen of the of the original fort. Uh, as as one climbs up to the top of it, up a, a very narrow sheep path, uh, a little bit of the wall um, can be seen, which shows the stonework to be mortared and uh, with lime mortar. So, so that is typical of uh, you know medieval uh, construction. Although it, it's it's highly likely that that the stones, uh, you know. Would have already been there, and they would have been reinforced with that lime mortar. So the it's uh, when I get back to the situation regarding their their possible pardoning, that may have occurred because they were of uh, the individuals were of uh, you know powerful families, and it may have been seen uh, wiser to, you know to uh, to pardon them rather than to rather than to pursue them uh, uh, within the law. We just, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's just a bit frustrating that there's this question mark. Uh, so there's a possibility that that the two brothers who were uh, with others, uh, that they may have been the brothers. And uh, for a few years uh, I had a personal opinion that these were the brothers. But you know things have changed since then. Uh, in recent years, uh, a, an, an individual with uh, historical interest uh, uh, notified me that there were marks on the on the shore just south of of Brothers Point, which indicated that 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 was a quern stone quarry. And uh, having looked at it, you know, I was amazed to find that indeed the. Uh, there were signs that thousands of quernstones ha had been quarried from that locality, and that must have taken uh, place over many years. Uh, the, it's, uh, it's certainly one of the one of the biggest quernstone quarry localities in Europe, and uh, again, frustratingly, there's just abs there is absolutely no evidence anywhere of of it being such. Uh, it's just rather mysterious. Uh, you know, books have been written. You know, you know about the about the area. Uh, the la the last uh, uh, 
well, one of these books was written in 1930 uh, by a school teacher who lived at Valtesee. He overlooked, uh, or his schoolhouse overlooked Brothers Point, and yet uh, when he was writing in the 1930s, he made no reference uh, to the fact that uh, Brothers Point may have had this quernstone quarry, although he, he refers to quernstones in his writings. So it's, it's a huge mystery to uh, why there's no reference to it. So uh, I, I'm now of the opinion that uh, Brothers Point is actually, or, or the Gallic uh, term, Ruin and Braren, is actually a corruption. Braren, I think, is a corruption of Brahan, because uh, the plural for quernstones is Brahan. You can, and we can see the similarity, uh, the close sim similarity between Bran and Braren. So I think originally that locality uh, was probably known as Ruin Amraren, and somebody uh, made a mistake, whether, which, is, which quite commonly happened. Uh, when I say a mistake, sometimes a, a deliberate omission of words uh, would be made by the map writers just for convenience. Uh, we find that commonly throughout Sky, and I think one of the most common ones is Uig, uh, over on the other side, which uh, is a corruption of Vik, V-I-K, which is the old Norse for bay, and somebody probably made a, you know, a mistake in altering the, the V to, to a U, so Uig. Is, uh, should really have been Vic 